You know, 30 years ago, design was entirely different. It used to be all analog and all physical. When I look out on the landscape today and I see that, you know, everybody knows what Helvetica is. 12-year-olds have a concept of what typefaces are and rules or any of the terms that we used to use. It's amazing to me because it used to be such a small group that knew how to manage this physical labor to do any project. So I'm going to take, for example, this print ad and try to show what the process would be to recreate something like this. Now imagine I don't have this to begin with. I've got to sketch this out and, and put it down to paper. So I've already done a bunch of hand-drawn sketches and kind of gotten the flavor of, well, I want a big image and I think I'll have a headline here and this here. We're going to set this aside and walk through how to do this. Now the first thing I need to know is how big this is. Now I've already measured it and I've decided it is 10 by 12. So using these rapidographs, which were these very fine pens. Now on the end of all the rapidographs is a numeral. This is 0 0.80. 0 0.80 is reflecting the term that this is a 0 0.80 rule, just like you would have a 0.25 rule or 0.5 rule or a one point rule in, in Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator. Um, there is no such thing in these as a 0.175 rule. They are all rounded numbers, which is why we base those on that today. Now these pens were a mess, frankly. Um, you filled them up yourself with ink, and you can see I'm already getting ink all over my hands. Um, they came out of this, like this, and in there, I'm not taking it out because it'll fly all over the place, is ink that I have filled up with this little container. And the ink flows through here until it dries out. And then I have to wash it and make sure nothing's dried up in there and do it again. So I've used my rapidograph and I've, I've already measured out the size of this ad and I've used my T-square and my triangle to draw these lines. And I've made sure that it's all squared up and nice and neat. And then I've used my, my triangle to draw the other sides as well. Not as simply as setting up a document and calling it nine by 12. It's like I had to know exactly what size it was. If I got that wrong, it'd go off and the art would be the wrong size and it wouldn't work. So now that I've figured out the size of my piece, and I have my rough sketch of what I want to do, I've probably talked to a photographer and I've said, you know, um, um, you know, Betty, I, I need a photograph of, of this young lady and, and I want her to hold a camera um, and I'd love her to have a red background. And, and the photograph has been shot. I've gone through a bunch of choices with a photographer and, and landed on the one that I like. And she then has sent me over a, a copy of one. And it's just a black and white Xerox. Just a cheap thing that I can work with. And I can crop it any way I want. And of course, to crop it, I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't, I don't have the digital tool to do cropping. I'm just gonna have to decide, hmm, that looks, yeah, she's better cropped in. Maybe I should get rid of a little bit more of the hair. Once I figured that out, I'm ready to place her down. And we had the, the fun job of working with things like rubber cement. And we would put that on the back of these things to get a sense of, well, let's see, how will this work? So I brush it down. And I don't have to put too much on it, obviously, because it just has to last until I show it to the client. I put my rubber cement down, and I'm ready to lay her down. Now, I also need to mathematically know how wide this is, because there's no guides. And I can't depend on a center tool to tell me exactly where it is. I have to really check it myself. Now, if I didn't like this, if I'm like, eh, it's a little too low or a little too high, I always pick it up. That's the undo feature. You get to just pick this up and say, oh, it was like a slider down a little bit. After a day, it's not gonna be that easy once it's dried, but while I'm doing it, it's no problem. So I've got the image down. Yeah, that looks swell. I'm happy with it. Now, in order to get type, it wasn't a matter of like type it in and you get to see, boy, that's, that looks swell in Helvetica. I had to sort of have a sense of what I wanted. Well, gee, do I like Helvetica? Do I want Garamond? I'm not sure. I would take manuscript copy, which was typewritten out, and I would write on it Helvetica, 24 point, um, you know, on 24 points of letting. And I'd send that to a typographer. And the typographer or the typesetter would send it back to me typeset. So they, I'd get these pieces of paper and I'd have to trim them out. Um, and it took about 24 hours to get some type back. So from the time I wrote it up, I told her it, I got this. And because it takes so long, I wanna get as many choices as I can. 
So I don't have to wait another 24 hours if I don't like this. So I have it set by that typesetter in different sizes, and I have it set in different fonts so that I can look at it and say, oh yeah, that Garamond looks pretty good. Or you know what, it's not big enough. Well, I have my 24 point Garamond, that looks better. But you wanted to have those choices, and it wasn't simply a matter of change font. It was a 24 hour process, it, it was manual. If I didn't like the kerning on this, if I was like, oh, the letter spacing looks funny, guess what? I get to take my X-Acto knife, cut it out by hand, and slowly shift things over, which is not fun, but I have done that for many hours. I've got my headline, got my, my image down. Clients also asked for some additional images. So he's provided me with these images of these slide carousels and, and projectors. Now, the original image came with a background. I didn't like the background. I wanted it silhouetted. So the only way to silhouette something was to take the image and then this stuff that we called ruby lith. And the ruby lith is this red film. So we make a mask with this, which is why in Photoshop, when you make a mask, it appears as red because it's emulating the ruby lith concept. And I would take the ruby lith and I'd lay it down on top of my image with the full thing, and I would have to manually trim out that silhouette. So I've done a really snappy job trimming this out, let's pretend that, and I've, I've gotten back my image, which looks beautiful, silhouetted on white, and I can decide then where I want these to go. So once again, I've got these little Xeroxes that let me know where they go. They're not in color, so I have to imagine what it looks like in color. Um, because it would be too expensive to try to make color prints at this point if I were gonna cut them up and move them around and try different things. And so I'm happy with my layout. Now I take this to my art director or the client and I show it to them and, and they say, well, we like that a lot. It's looking really good, but we think that model has a funny blemish. Is there anything we can do about that? So I'll call the photographer and say, she's got a blemish. Now, it's not a digital file. It's an actual transparency or a print photograph. So the photographer will then take an airbrush, which is a physical object, and they will go in and airbrush all of these pieces on her. It was very expensive, but it was worth it if it was a really important ad or something that had to be fixed. Now the other thing that might have happened is I've shown this to the client or the art director. The client says, you know what? I think that type needs to be underlined because it's really important. I don't have time to send out for more type. I don't have 24 hours. It has to go to the printer today. So there was this stuff called Letraset and it was rubbed down. Now I could either use my rapidograph and try to draw the rule, but it had to be perfect. No changes at all in thickness and that's tricky. Or I could use the Letraset. And the Letraset were great. I could say, okay, again, where do I want it? I would measure down. I would use my triangle and T-square to make sure it's exactly square. And then that would get rubbed down and I would have my burnisher and I would rub this down until I got what I wanted. Now this is down there permanently, so I can change it. And then you had to hope it stuck. And you picked it up and it did, good. Now you can see, it's cracks in it, it's not pretty. It never was actually ever flawless. He might also say, you know, I don't like that headline font. Again, I don't have time, so what can I do? I have Letraset, and I know, well, I've got this Helvetica in 42 point in my drawer. What if he, maybe that'll work, he'll like that. And I can do the same thing. Now the end product is going to be not terribly pretty. And there's always a chance he may want something else that's a little fancier, like, gee, it wouldn't be swell if, the, if we had a beautiful French curve in here. Well, there's no Bezier tools. So I have this whole box of French rules which make these kinds of curves. And I can lay this down on the image and I can trim it out and I'll mark, well, let's see, this is exactly where I want that French curve to be this shape here. Mark it beautifully. And then I get to take my ruby lift again and try to perfectly trim it out to that exact rule. So again, it's a physical and manual labor tool, but you had to be pretty good at it. And in my very first job, the, the art director didn't even trust X-Acto knives. She said they're too clumsy and too fat. So we had to either use surgical scalpels or 
raw razor blades. Those are not fun to play with. So, you know, you had to be very good about it. Now I have all my pieces done. My, my whole layout is finished. This is the final document. This is a mechanical. Now the mechanical has to get overlaid with instructions to the printer, make this red, make this white, make these color images, tells them exactly what I want to have happen here. And then I give it to a messenger and they messenger it over to the, to the printer. Now if something happens to it along the way, if it falls off a truck in the rain and gets ruined, I have to start all over again from scratch. There's no backup of this. So the printer gets it, he has all my instructions, he can put them together, and if he's a good printer, I get something really nice, just like this. So you can see, it was a process that took a lot of manual labor. It was physical skills, and everyone had their own particular way of doing it. But it wasn't just this everyday, all over the place thing that everyone's mother could do. This was an actual graphic art skill. Um, hence the, the insularness of the profession at the time, which was great, but Maybe it's better now that it's much more open and everybody knows what a font is.